expected lots of craters. But the previous spacecraft had only looked at about 1% of the planet. So we didn't know whether all of Mars was covered with craters or if only small amounts of Mars. So we didn't know whether all of Mars was covered with craters or if only small amounts of Mars were covered by craters. Turns out, as we will see in a minute, that something like half of Mars is heavily cratered and half of it is not at all heavily cratered. Now, what does it mean that a region is not heavily cratered? It means that it's young. It hasn't been around long enough to accumulate all these scars of ancient cosmic catastrophes. What does it mean that a region is heavily cratered? It means that it's old because it has been around long enough to accumulate all of these craters. So the cratered regions of Mars must be old, perhaps going back close to the beginning of Mars about four and a half billion years ago. And the uncrated regions must be young. As with the case of Phobos and Deimos, if we find craters, we can name them. And uh, the only rule is that the people we name them after have to be dead. Fortunately, there are many dead people. And uh, some of them even did some notable things in their lives. So in this particular region of Mars, for example, there are craters named Lowell, after Percival Lowell, who did a great deal for the study of Mars, one of the major ones of which is to excite 11-year-olds into thinking about Mars. Many of the generation of present planetary astronomers were first excited about Mars through Percival Lowell or Edgar Rice Burroughs, who wrote terrible romantic fiction based on uh, Lowell's view of Mars. Um, there is Maunder right here. He's a British astronomer who proposed that the Lowellian canals didn't exist. Um, there are a large number of geologists, astronomers. There's a, a crater named Huxley, after Thomas Henry Huxley, uh, who was a great supporter of Charles Darwin and gave lectures at this royal institution. There are even a few science fiction writers, including H.G. Wells, who uh, have craters named after them on Mars. Now, when we arrived at Mars, when the spacecraft arrived at Mars in late 1971, we discovered that there was a planet-wide dust storm and virtually nothing could be seen on the surface of the planet, except in one place, a place called Tharsis, where we could see some strange features. And since this was the only place where we could see any features, we, of course, spent some time worrying about them. So here they are. You can see three dark spots or marks all in a row. Since you had three marks in a row, some of the more clever scientists proposed naming them Harpo Groucho and forgotten the name of the third, Chico, thank you. Um, but reason prevailed, and they were called by appropriate scientific names, North Spot, Middle Spot, and South Spot. <laughs> the uh, dark spot over here uh, is exactly in the position of a uh, feature which had been seen by 19th century observers and called Nix Olympica, the snows of Olympus, and such a lovely name. Um, that we call this spot Nix Olympica. But what were they? Well, the first thing we tried to do is to, with a computer, enhance the contrast of these pictures to bring out more detail. And you can see that uh, that's what's being done. For example, here. Here is a close-up of Nix Olympica. Well, what do we see? We see a dark smudge which seems to have a hole in it. Now. Let's pause just a moment before going on to these pictures and think, what does a dark smudge with a hole in it mean? Well, why are we seeing these features at all when the planet is covered with a great dust storm? The only thing which makes sense is that these are features sticking up above the dust. Well, what is a sort of roundish feature that sticks up above the dust? It must be a mountain. But this is a mountain with a hole in it. What is a mountain with a hole in it called? A volcano. Everybody knows that. Thank you. So this is the physicist's approach to 
figuring out what these things are. If you have a big mountain with a hole in it, it's probably a volcano. There is another approach to this problem. It's the geologist's approach, which is look closely at it, and if it looks like a volcano on the Earth, then it must be a volcano. Uh, another good approach. So we attempted to look more closely at all of them. Here is an attempt to look at the computer enhanced version of middle spot. And what do we see here? Another smudge with a hole in it. Well, the geological approach was frustrated for a while. Time went on, the dust storm dissipated, and eventually we got much better pictures of these features. And here, in the next picture, is an example. This is a close-up of middle spot. Ignore the rectangle, which is put on Mars by us, and doesn't exist on Mars. And you can see this enormous mountain. Here is the base of it. Here it is going steeply up. Here is a big hole in the top called the caldera. It looks exactly like terrestrial volcanoes. Case proved. And here is a close-up of the largest volcano in the solar system, so far as we know, Nix Olympica, which is now called Olympus Mons, which means Mount Olympus. And uh, whether there are any other famous individuals from classical mythology that live there as well, we do not know. But this is what Mount Olympus on Mars looks like. We are looking straight down the caldera. And let me describe what we have here. Here, on the right, is a flat plain here, which is the Tharsis Plateau. It is already very high. Here is a sheer vertical cliff, one to two kilometers high. Then we slowly walk our way uphill. The slope is modest here, very steep here. Then we come to the caldera, and there's a steep plunge in. Going to the other side of the caldera, we go down quickly here, slowly here, come again to the cliff, and go down to uh, the Tharsis Plateau. From the base to the high point is almost 30 kilometers, almost 80,000 feet. It is a volcano which dwarfs both in height and in lateral extent any volcano on the planet Earth. And notice that there are virtually no impact craters. Here is, here is one, there are almost no others. Uh, on the flanks of these volcanic mountains, they are therefore very young. A rough estimate makes them uh, no older than hundreds of millions, perhaps a billion years old. You may think that's rather elderly, uh, but it's young compared to the age of Mars. Mars is, in recent times, geologically active, which is very different from the case with the moon, and shows, and there are many other things which show it, I'll come to them shortly, that uh, Mars is by no means an object like the moon. It is active in the sense that the Earth is. On the other hand, it has places which are very poorly eroded like the moon. It is a different place from either the Earth or the moon. Now, volcanoes, we are going, th this is dirty up the Royal Institution Day, and uh, we have here a model of volcanoes. What is a volcano? Hot lava under hydrostatic, oh, it was a rhetorical question, under, un, under hydrostatic pressure comes up a point of weakness in the ground, flows out, makes a mountain, and as the lava continues to flow up and overflow through the central caldera, the mountain continues to build. In the course of this, great clouds of ash are spread into the atmosphere and spread out on the flanks of the volcano. Well, we don't have really four volcanoes here, but we have a very good imitation of it. And uh, if Mr. Coates will make the volcanoes go, we have a, you see, here's volcanic ash spilling out on the floor. Notice how the terrain is discolored and great cloud of smoke rising to the roof of the Royal Institution. If we were lit by sunlight instead of artificial lights, it would have gotten somewhat darker. 
because uh, the clouds would